Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. We're continuing the Audi S3 Cabrio project. And currently we're in the disassembly phase. So what I kind of did off camera is I took apart the interior of that car uh, just to kind of get some practice in. Um, so I'm gonna show you that in a little bit. And then in this video, we're gonna be disassembling the interior of this car and hope to get it <clears throat> down to the bare wires and begin to compare uh, the different wires, what we need to subtract, what we need to add in order to retain all of the features of the 2018 Audi S3 and all of the features that are needed for the Cabrio. So what I'm talking about in particular is the Audi S3 obviously has CarPlay, virtual cockpit, um, puddle lights, Bang & Olufsen system, adaptive suspension, um, things like that. And of course the Audi A3, we need to retain the roof, uh, the, electro the electronic roof, I guess you could say. Um, as well as maybe some other things as well. So there's not really a documentation process on this uh, that I've seen. So I'm going to be kind of going into uncharted territory to my knowledge. As you guys have seen, I've done plenty of retrofits. This is going to be the biggest retrofit ever. I'm essentially retrofitting an S3 into an Audi A3. So this is going to be the biggest retrofit ever. So I'm going to take the wiring diagrams from both cars, compare them. At the end, hopefully get as clean of an install as possible, uh, taking into consideration all of the factory wiring, routing, um, all the factory connections, and all of that stuff. So, without further ado, let me show you guys what we got going on. So first of all, as you guys can see, I have both cars up on jack stands. Don't worry, I've tested it, I've shaken the cars. They are both not gonna come down on me. Uh, safety is a very, very important consideration. Given that I don't have a lift and I'm in this garage, I gotta do what I gotta do. As you can see, this car is mostly taken apart. Take a look in here. Isn't this quite a sight? Everything is out. And right now, what I have been doing is I've been going around and marking each of the kind of offshoots of the harness. Uh, you can see here, this is the right rail, I called it, um, as well as the under the seat um, connections, the HVAC connections, the MMI connections, and things like that. So that's what I have going on. Took the dash out. I'm gonna be doing the same thing over here and kind of showing you guys either on time lapse or pausing and kind of showing for any of you guys that are looking to do the same thing. Maybe not quite the same thing, but maybe replacing the dashboard or taking out the center console, things like that. I'm gonna make this car look like that. So everything is going out. I need to have exposure to all of the wiring. And then what really, the question that I have, it's obviously the fuse box we're gonna transfer over but also maybe this crash assembly. If you guys can see this, this is metal and it's an integral structural piece of the car that is removable. But if you look really close, the wiring is all entangled in with this thing. So I'm wondering, perhaps it might be easiest to actually pull this entire thing out and install it into this car. I don't know, remains to be seen, but in this video, I wanna make the Cabrio look like this on the inside and then begin to map out where the wires will go, what wires will stay. And then of course, after that, we're gonna start working in the engine compartments. Obviously for this car, I'm gonna remove all of the front components and get it to be in a very similar state to that. I got my trusty Pittsburgh engine hoist over here, ready to do some work. So yeah, one step at a time, one thing I was kind of thinking, I was kind of hoping, since I'd never done this before, I was kind of hoping that I would be able to transplant only the interior wiring harness, for example, and start there, kind of piecemeal it in that way. But the more I'm digging in, the more I'm seeing that this wiring harness is really uh, one big old web of stuff. So 
uh, I'm gonna have to do this project all at once. Um, initially, I was planning on doing the interior first, swapping everything over, testing it, making sure. What I realized is this is gonna be um, all hands on deck, all parts swapping over at the same time. So really introduces some risk to this, but um, shouldn't be too big of a deal. I've already removed the exhaust from the S3. I'm gonna be doing the same thing over here eventually. And then if you guys remember my Jetta video, if you guys remember the all wheel drive Jetta swap, for those wondering, it's still um, in progress. I don't wanna be known as the guy that never finishes projects. I have everything I need, I just need to get the car back from, from my dad. Um, but anyway, the rear subframe is going to drop down and we're just going to roll it over and plop it in so that should be nice and easy. The same thing with the front subframe between the two cars. And really the subframe is identical between these two cars but this subframe has the Audi S3 steering rack and the steering rack in this car is different and slower. So I really like the steering rack in this car so because the steering uh, rack is attached uh, bolted into the um, subframe. I'm just gonna swap the entire subframe, save myself some time. And yeah, eventually we'll get back to the taillights and see kind of the difference in wiring between this taillight and this taillight for those of you guys looking to do a retrofit, um, as well as pulling all of the blind spot monitor locations and wiring and everything. So. So yeah guys, as you can see, the project has officially kicked off. Uh, I did some work off camera, but uh, that was more for practice. I'm going to show you guys on the convertible how to do all of this stuff. Um, if you got any questions, of course, let me know. I'm very open to answering that. But in the meantime, let's roll the time lapse and begin taking apart the interior of the Audi A3. Let's do it. Let's do it. Well, as you might have seen in the time lapse, we got a lot of work done in the interior. And it was a lot. It's super hot in my garage right now, so I had the fan running, music on. In total, this took me about, I want to say, four hours or so um, as far as I got. Maybe a little bit less. So let's take a quick look what we have here you can see that and then all of these parts that came off just like that and then down here of course and over there and then there's the seat behind so we're starting to look pretty similar between the two cars but I don't know if I'm allowed to show this on YouTube Underneath the dash, this is what I found. So, happy hour, Houston. So, uh, yeah, someone, uh, I, I could have sworn a girl owned this car before, but uh, maybe this is a girl, I'm not judging, but uh, pretty funny. Leave that there, maybe stuff it in there when the new dash goes in. But if we take a look in here, 
Uh, the dash is pretty difficult to remove, not gonna lie. So I'll kind of walk you guys real quick through everything that needs to get taken out. So in order to remove the dash, obviously you gotta remove the uh, knee panels on both sides. Uh, this car has knee airbags on both sides. And then while you're doing that, also making sure to disconnect uh, any wiring that might get tangled up. The most difficult part is up here, the rain sensor area. There's a speaker and a rain sensor up in the dash over there and it's pretty tricky to get it. You have to pop off that little grill as you guys might have seen. Uh, and then kind of fish your fingers around and pull these connectors out. Um, I had quite a challenge uh, on that car. That was my practice car. Uh, I didn't break anything, but uh, yeah. Anyway, in order to remove the dash, obviously make sure that all the wiring is disconnected. But if we look down here, we have one, two, you gotta remove the MMI screen, three, and then inside the dash when you have the lower parts, one and two. And then over here, uh, above the glove box, one, two, and then two sets of bolts here for arms. Um, I took them out, I don't think you have to, uh, but just to be cautious. And then down here is one, and then up above in the corner, there's another one. On this side, we got one, we got one, and down here is another one. Oh, and also down there. So all of those things removed, um, they're all eight millimeter bolts. Uh, most of this car uses these kinds of bolts for the interior. The same thing with the center console as well. Uh, they're all eight millimeter bolts except for except for the armrest. The armrest is aluminum and it's held down by these four. Um, you can use a 10 mil or a T27 or T30 on that. Um, and then as you guys have seen the rear uh, air vent kind of hugs the little bracket around there. That comes out not a problem. You guys probably know how to remove the seat. It's pretty simple. You uh, push the seat back to expose the front two Torx uh, triple square bolts. And then you pull it forward to expose the rear. Tip the seat. And over here, there's a little clip that holds that in place. I put it back just so I don't lose it. And then a bunch of connectors at the bottom that you gotta release. And then the seat is free. Uh, same thing with the steering wheel. The steering wheel, there's a little trick. There's tons of YouTube videos on how to pop the airbag. Once you do that, you need a triple square bolt to uh, pull, uh, pull that. The uh, steering wheel comes out and then the clock spring comes out. It's held with a little tiny, uh, I think maybe a T10 or a T15 sized Torx bolt. So yeah guys, that is pretty much where I'm gonna end for today. Um, I got a storage unit because once again, I'm in this small garage and I don't, my, my, my fiance will not let me store all these parts in the house. So I'm gonna have to make a trip over there and dump all of this stuff, including the rear seat. And then um, we're gonna continue with removing the rear seats as well as these panels as well as that seat, the door panels, and uh, that should be it. So yeah guys, thanks so much for watching. So far, just beginning the process of taking everything apart. Here pretty soon we're gonna be pulling the carpets uh, and getting it to look just like that car looks, and then beginning to compare, beginning to compare the wiring. Um, in the next video, we're gonna be pulling the bumpers, both front and rear, and also beginning the process of taking out the engines. Uh, the reason I say engines is both these cars are were running and driving at some point. It's gonna be a mess in this garage, I'll, let me tell you right now. Two engines and transmissions out of the car, swapping them around, it's gonna be, yeah, it's gonna be tough. So, 
Let me know if you have any questions. I'll catch you guys next time. Take care. Peace out. I'm Alex. Goodbye.